All right, what I want to do in this video is give a big picture view of what we're going to be doing in Matthew 52, Calculus 2. And it might not be entirely necessary that you understand everything that we're going to be doing in this course as we go into this course, but I think it'll make your life a little bit easier if you kind of have a um, broad strokes idea of sort of the roadmap of the course of how all the different pieces fit together. So I'm going to try to keep this pretty short, but just sort of give you an idea of what we will be doing. Uh, so that as we learn these different pieces, they have a little bit of context and maybe that'll make it a little bit easier for you. So I was thinking the easiest way to do that would probably be to kind of compare and contrast this class, Math 252, Calculus 2, with what was probably the most recent math class you took, which was Calculus 1, Math 251 at our school. So maybe a good place to start is just talking about the main topic of the course. Maybe you remember in Math 251 and Calculus 1 that the main topic was this thing called the derivative. Pretty much everything that you did in this class was focused around this idea of a derivative. In some sense, the whole course was, if I give you a function f of x, can you tell me the derivative of that function f prime of x? Right? That's basically what you did in Math 251. And yeah, it took a while to get there. You had to learn limits. You figured different ways to get the derivative. You did all sorts of applications of this derivative. But it was all based around this one idea, the idea of the derivative. Turns out that Math 252 is kind of like Math 251 in that the entire course revolves around one idea. But the idea is not the derivative. The idea is what we will later define to be an integral. And an integral and a derivative, they're very related, it turns out. Um, in some sense, this is sort of the inverse of this thing here. We'll learn something called the antiderivative, which will help us figure out the integral. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. I don't want to teach you the entire course right now. I just want to kind of give you the roadmap. So as 251 was entirely devoted to this idea called the derivative, Math 252 will be entirely devoted to this idea called the integral. So how did we study the derivative? Well, you, can, you might not think about it in these terms, but maybe when I tell you how we got there, maybe you'll agree with me. It was sort of a three-step process. First, we learned about these things called limits. And depending on what you learn in pre-calculus classes, this might have been a little bit of review for you, um, or it might not have been review for you. It might have been completely new. And the reason you learned limits is because limits allowed you to determine the derivative algebraically. And I might be stretching the limits of your memory at this point, but maybe I can help you recall that you really did determine the derivative algebraically um, using things like the definition of the derivative and the difference quotient. If either of these formulas uh, ring a bell, then you do remember figuring out the derivative algebraically. You remember it being really, really challenging, involving a lot of techniques that you didn't really use for the rest of the course, but you could figure out the derivative algebraically by um, simplifying either of these two expressions here. The top one is what's called the difference quotient. The bottom one is what's called the definition of the derivative. And you're like, that's not really how I remember Math 251. Uh, I kind of did that like the second or third week into the course, but I spent most of my time determining the derivative using these different rules. Things like the product rule, the quotient rule, the chain rule, if you remember any of those things. Um, that's kind of what most people think of when they think of calculus one. When they think of derivatives, they think about, oh yeah, the chain rule. There's a really hard problem where I use the product rule inside the chain rule, that kind of stuff. That's true. That's a quicker, more efficient way of determining the derivative, but it kind of lacks this intuitive understanding that you get from determining the derivative algebraically, which is why every single calculus class ever, calc one, has you first figure out the derivative algebraically, and then give you a more powerful, quick hand way of figuring out the derivative with these rules, the product rule and the chain rule. And then typically what you do is after you figure out the derivative, you kind of justify why you figured out the derivative in the first place. And you do that by looking at different applications of the derivative. And when I say applications, I mean things like optimization and related rates, to name a couple, although there are lots of different applications you can do with the derivative. Right, that's kind of the broad strokes of what you do in a Math 251 class. You want to know this thing, the derivative, and the way you figure it out, well, first algebraically, but to figure it out algebraically, you need to understand what a limit is. So you spend some time with limits so that you can figure out the derivative algebraically, and then you figure out a more powerful, more efficient way of figuring it out using these rules. And now that you're an expert figuring out derivatives, you come up with some applications, some reasons why you might want to figure out the derivative. And often this gets so abstract that you forget what the hell the derivative was in the first place. Uh, but maybe it would be nice if you could tie back together this main topic with what the derivative really is. And maybe the best way to do that is with the picture. 
And one version of the picture that you probably drew in your Math 251 class was you had some sort of function, often f of x equals x squared, and then you pick some point on that function, and either it was given explicitly, like you t I said, the x value equals 1, or maybe it was just left as a constant, like the letter a. And what you were supposed to do is figure out the slope of the tangent line to that curve at that point. And if you do it using algebraically, if you use one of these two formulas, you'd come up with something like f prime of a equals 2a. And what this is saying is the slope of the tangent line to this specific function at any value a is exactly twice whatever that value of a is. And maybe if you use these rules, like the power rule, the product rule, chain rule, instead of getting it in this form, you got it in this form. But maybe you can recognize that these two formulas are really telling you the exact same thing. And then often what would happen is we'd be like, okay, this tells me a way to figure out the slope of the tangent line for any value a. But what if I wanted it at some specific point, like where the x value equals 1? Well, then all I got to do is change the a, or the x in this case, into the number 1. And that will tell me the slope of this tangent line that's drawn in this dotted green line is exactly 2. And that's what the derivative is. It's the slope of the tangent line to a curve. And if you can understand that, you can start to see how these different applications are really useful and how this is a really important, a really powerful topic. That's a review of Math 251, which wasn't really the point of this video. The point of this video was to give you an overview of Math 252, but I think what you'll see is it follows this same pattern. Right? The first thing you did in Math 251 is, well, I wanted to determine the, deter the derivative algebraically, but to do so, I have to learn some limits. So we learn limits so that we can determine the derivative algebraically. Well, guess what? In Math 252, the first goal is to determine the integral algebraically. But there's a problem when you're trying to determine the integral algebraically. Actually, there's a couple problems. One problem is it's going to involve limits. And some of these limits will be more challenging than the limits you learned in Math 251. So we're going to start this course, Math 252, by going back to limits. And this might be review for some of you guys. Some of these limits you will have learned in Math 251, but maybe some of them you won't. The limits you learned in Math 251 were specifically geared to solving these problems right here, determining the derivative algebraically. We don't need the derivative algebraically in Math 252. We need the integral algebraically in Math 252. And how are we going to do that? Well, with different formulas. It won't be these two formulas. And to solve, to simplify the formulas that we will come up with in this class, we will need limits. And the limits we will need for these formulas will be slightly different than these formulas. So we're going to learn limits in a slightly different context in 252 than we did in 251. So we'll start learning those limits, then we'll determine the integral algebraically, and just like you saw over here, determining the thing algebraically isn't super powerful. In fact, it's quite difficult. It's hard to do. Maybe you remember when you did this in Math 251 that the function you were given had to be a really simple function, like f of x equals x squared. Try doing this when you have some really complex function, like f of x equals the natural log of x squared minus 3x to the fifth power or something like that. And it will be almost impossible. It will take you forever to try to solve it this way. So you instead learn to solve it this way. Well, guess what? Same thing over here. When you're trying to figure out integrals algebraically, you're going to see that it's hard. In fact, I don't want to scare anybody, but it's significantly harder than what you did over here. In fact, everything you do on Math 252 will be related to something you did in Math 251, but a harder version of it. But the good news is having already gone through Math 251, these things won't be as difficult as they were the first time around. So even though the concepts themselves are more difficult in 252 than what you saw in 251, the effort, the difficulty that you'll actually experience will be pretty similar to what you saw in this class. We're first going to determine the integral algebraically. You'll be amazed at how difficult it is, but we'll get through it together. And then you'll be like, come on, you're really going to make me do all this work? And it was a pretty simple function. What about when the function gets difficult? And I'll be like, don't worry. There's a bunch of different rules, except they're not derivative rules. They're integral rules. Guess what? There is no product rule in Math 252. There is no chain rule in Math 252. Those things you learned in Math 252, or in Math 251, don't apply in Math 252. Why? Because those things help determine derivatives. We're not determining derivatives. We're determining integrals. But the good news is because integrals and derivatives are related in some sense that we'll make clear in this class, you're going to learn rules that will be related to those rules that you learn in Math 251. So you'll definitely need to be an expert with those rules. And don't worry if you're not. We'll review them a little bit. But those rules themselves won't be what you're using when you become an expert determining integrals.
So just like in Matthew 51, you really did all four of these steps, but if you had to argue where was the majority of your time spent in this class, it would probably be step three. Right? You spent a little bit of time of limits. You barely even remember doing these things algebraically, but you definitely remember the product rule and the chain rule. You remember spending a lot of time there because you had to be really, really good figuring out derivatives because the teacher might give you any function in the world and you had to be able to figure out the derivative of it so that you can apply your knowledge of these derivatives to different real world situations. Right, you spent the majority of your time here in three. In Math 252, it's going to be the same thing. Do a little bit with limits. We'll determine the integral algebraically, mostly so that you have this deeper understanding of what the integral means. But then we'll throw that all out the window, just like we kind of threw this all out the window, and be like, all right, I'm going to level with you guys. This isn't a very efficient way of figuring out the integral, just like these aren't very efficient ways of figuring out derivatives. There's a better way. There are rules. We're going to spend the majority of our time in this class learning those rules. Why? Why do we want to learn all those rules? For the same reason you did in Math 251, right? So that you can be an expert so that we can figure out the integral of any function so that we can start to do some applications. We'll finish up this class, Math 252, in kind of the same way we finished up Math 251. You'll figure out a bunch of real world, and that should be in like air quotes, but you can't see me so you can't tell that I'm doing that, real world applications of not the derivative, but instead the integral. And I'm not going to bother listing them here because we don't really understand the integral yet, so it wouldn't make any sense. And that'll be the end of our class. And when you leave this class, the thing that you'll remember the most will be figuring out the integral with these various rules. And maybe if you're really good at this stuff, just like you might have this picture in mind for Math 251, maybe you'll have a picture in mind for Math 252. Here's your picture for Math 252. Looks very different from the picture for Math 251. In fact, at this point, you don't see any connections at all other than I arbitrarily chose the same function, f of x equals x squared. But that function's not fixed. You can use any function you want in this class, just like you use any function you wanted in this class. And over here, the goal was to figure out the slope of the tangent line to the curve. Right? Maybe that phrase was beaten into your head in Math 251. That's not the goal over here in Math 252. It's very different. The goal in Math 252 is to figure out how much area there is underneath whatever function you have between two different values. Weird, huh? How much area did I shade in right here? That's the question. That is, the answer to that question involves this thing called the integral, and that's the topic for Math 252. And what you'll see is this idea of how much area is there underneath the curve, and this idea of what is the slope of the tangent line to a curve are intimately related. It's surprising. You shouldn't see that connection at all right now, but it turns out these two things are very related. One is kind of the opposite of the other, loosely speaking. But you don't need to understand all that right now because that's the whole point of this class. What I want you to see in this class is how this picture is related to this picture. And I want you to be an expert answering this picture, just like you left the previous class as an expert answering this picture. And that's a big picture overview of what we'll be doing in Math 252.